God, we thank you, Lord Emmanuel. We thank you, Lord God, that you were here with us this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we can call upon you, that we can hear from you, that we can just be loved by you. And yes, Lord, we can love. So we just ask you, Lord God, to bless this service, bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we believe. Lord, we believe. Mm. We believe in all that you've said and all that you've done, Lord. But Lord, we don't believe fully, and we're not fully convinced in our souls yet. So Lord, we are here this day to hear from you. Lord, we are here to hear from you, from your word. Lord, that we would be changed on the inside. Lord, that faith would take grip of our souls yes, in such a way that it would make a difference in our life. Yes, Lord, that we wouldn't be satisfied with standing on the edge and just looking. But Lord God, we would be part of your plan, part of your history. Lord, moving forward in mercy and grace as you send us forth with your word. As you send us forth in the power of the Spirit, Lord, to be your agents of change. And Lord God, we do this by faith. So Lord, we need you. Lord, speak to us. Lord, come upon us in power that we would understand you in a deeper way, Lord, that we would follow our great shepherd wherever he leads us, Lord, and we would honor you with our lives, with our words, with our deeds, and with our actions, and all that we do, Lord, confirming what we believe to be true in our souls, Lord. Do a mighty work amongst this body today. Lord, speak from heaven through your servant, Lord, that each soul would be touched and changed, Lord, and they themselves would go out in the power of the Spirit to reveal your glory. Lord, come upon us in power, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yes. We pray that uh, you would move in our hearts, that we would become more and more people uh, who earnestly seek you, and, uh, not just superficially, but earnestly, yes. Lord, that our intensity uh, toward you would grow, our affection uh, for the things of the world would lessen, our love affair with ourself uh, would be uh, continually put to death, mm -hmm. and that, Lord, you would receive the glory and the honor uh, that is due you, yes. uh, Lord. By how we live our lives. Yes. So help us to see you, help us to see who we are in the light of your glorious presence, that we would be changed um, by you, Lord, and that we would be known as a church and as a people that are <coughs> cleaning hard and going hard after you. Yes. And, and we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters and friends. Good morning, God. Good morning, brother. This morning I have the privilege of standing before God's people to talk about faith. Amen. This is a subject that is, there's absolutely no way I could ever get to the bottom of faith in just a few minutes that we're going to have together. <coughs> so, Please excuse your servant if there is a truth from God's word that we don't touch upon today. But the truth of faith is so radical. It is so powerful of <clears throat> what it speaks to on our souls and what it's about. That it is life-changing and life-altering. So this morning we're reading you some verses out of Hebrews 11. We're going to start in verse 1, which you can find on page... 1,191 in our pew Bibles. And if you're able, please. Faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, 
We understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land, like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past bearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he, as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. May God bless the reading of this word to your soul. Amen. You be seated. <coughs> so, Lord, heaven and earth, Lord God, you are infinitely good, and Lord, you are love itself. Lord, we have not taken all that you offer us this day. We have not loved you with all of our heart, soul, spirit, and mind. But we have loved ourselves and we have loved this world. We have loved the things that have wrapped around our fingers. And we have lived by sight and not by faith. We've been given the temptations. We've been given the temper. We've been given to pride, and we've been ashamed of your name this week, Lord. Lord God, help us to grow in grace. Lord, grow our faith. Lord, teach us to believe every single word you have given to us. Help us to believe it is truth. Lord, help us to serve the kingdom. Help us to make our election and calling sure. Lord, grow our faith in all that you've said, in all that you've done. Lord, enlighten us to your law and give us understanding of it. Teach us, Lord, teach us. Teach us about heaven. Teach us about the glory of the kingdom. 
Teach us about the rich and glorious inheritance that awaits all your children. Holy Spirit, come upon us. Lord, come upon us in power to do what we cannot do. Lord, to convict us and to convince us of our sin, Lord, that we would turn to you. Lord, teach us about your holy righteousness and produce what is right and what is just and what is fair in our actions and all of our dealings, Lord, with each other. Teach us what is right in your eyes. Teach us about the judgment to come, Lord. Give us a holy fear of that day. A great reverential fear, Lord, to warn others of the coming wrath. <clears throat> Help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord God. And take them off of us. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, heal our land. We're a divided people, Lord. We are lost without you. We're a nation that's gone astray, Lord. Dealing with falsehoods and wickedness. So, Lord, bring wisdom down from heaven. Lord, speak through your children. Lord, as agents of change, Lord, that the gospel would go out. In our workplace, in our homes, in our families. Lord, we do pray for our all of our elected officials, Lord, that you've allowed to lead us, Lord, at the national, the state, and at the local levels, Lord, give them wisdom from heaven. Mm -hmm. Save their souls, Lord God. And Lord God, bless your word this morning as it goes out. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, wow, this is a piece of scripture that Should really just set us back in a deeper understanding because we cannot comprehend faith. Faith is ultimately a gift from God and God alone. You don't produce it. You don't create it. You don't... <laughs> you need to ask for it. That's, where, that's our position. We need to lean and trust on God for that faith. And without faith, as the brother said, it is impossible to please God. So we're in need of this faith. But what is it? This morning I'm going to talk on two portions of it. We're going to talk about what God has said about it. What we'll call the doctrines of faith. What does the Lord say about it? And how do we respond to receive it? We're also going to talk about the uses of faith. Because without being equipped to understand it, to seek it, and then to apply it in our life, we're just empty. We're, we're, just, we're just parroting information that does not power we need to have the power of God in our life because we know where it comes from. We know the power of the gospel that speaks it. Then we receive it and then share it. But that is what needs to happen in our soul. So as I look across this body, I see that all of us in some way have responded to the Lord Jesus Christ and to His gospel. To the glorious gospel of the good news that he saved sinners from the wrath to come. And we don't speak enough about that, but that's the radical truth. That there is a great day of judgment for everybody. There will be a resurrection both of the righteous and the wicked. And all will stand before God. And the truth is, we will only stand before God by faith. So faith is inseparable from everything that is part of the Christian life. With faith, you can't pray. Without it, I'm sorry. Without faith, you can't pray. 
Without, pray, without faith, you can't have hope. Without faith, you can't love. Without faith, you can't repent. You can't turn to God. You can't be saved without faith. Right. So faith is a center. It's a root. It's a, it's a deep truth that we all need to really look to understand in a greater way. And again, it is the mercy of God that He provides faith. And we hear in this great chapter, which has been called the Hall of Faith for the ancients. But before we get to that, I want to encourage us from other scriptures that would give us that foundation. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says this, that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word about Christ. Which is a picture that God spoke to and gave a message to Isaiah of Verse, uh, chapter 55 and verse 3. It's the same picture. That we would hear God from His Word. That's how faith is developed. That's how faith is created. So, because we've all responded in some way to the Gospel, I want to encourage us in that way. By faith. By faith, God's, He affects us to hear Him. And we hear Him through His Word. You see, our lives are in desperate need. We're all seeking purpose and meaning in our lives. And our consciences are continually looking for that purpose and meaning in life. And many of us, before God saved our souls, had looked everywhere and we were thirsting and we were hungering for truth and righteousness and understanding. But we were lost. We were looking in places where it could not be found. Many of us looked in science. I was that guy. I believed that uh, science would answer everything. I believed reason would get me there. To my shame. To my regret. So, our lives, we're moving through. And the gospel is still a cultural thing that we have. We have in our culture the principle of do good unto others. Many other cultures don't have that. Take, don't take that for granted. We, we want to help each other. We, America loves the underdog, if you will. These are elements of, a, of, a, of, a, of Christian principles that are still underlying in our culture. And we, we know them. And by faith, we love them. We really do. But God is confronting all of us with truth every day. And even when we were unbelievers, He did it. We got a world that's trying to tell us that everything came from nothing. It's a vile lie. Nothing comes from nothing every single time. So what are we going to do? We hear these messages from the culture and from the world that are saying one thing. Then we hear this. It says, "We understand that the universe was formed at God's command." We're confronted. Right. How will this be reconciled? And the answer is by faith. Mm. By faith, we believe God. By faith, His Word becomes alive when we're confronted with the lies of this world and the truth of what God has said. Mm. And we receive those truths by faith. That is the heart of the matter. Christ is beckoning this world. He's calling everybody to repent and believe the gospel. And he does that because he wishes that none would perish. That all would come to repentance. That all would come to understand his glory and his goodness. That supersedes the vile lies of this world. That are trying to distract us. Trying to get our eyes off of Christ. 
in every direction, in every realm, whether it be the TV, the radio, the phone, everything, the enemy is attacking us on every level to destroy our faith, to get between us and God, to get us to believe the lie. And the fact of the matter is at the end, we will never be able to break away from our sin without faith. We have to really see faith as the center of who we are in Christ. It's, a, it's, the, it's the great door of understanding by which we meet the Lord of glory. So Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That in itself, we can spend a month on just talking about that truth. Because it's so radical. It's so deep. Because confidence is full assurance. It's not partial. It's not incomplete. It's not a little bit. It, you can't walk with one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. You'll be conflicted. You'll be a mess. You will be a walking contradiction. And praise God for His church where His word is spoken and is spoken boldly for us to come before and to bow beneath because there is a great and mighty King in heaven. And He has revealed His will. He has revealed His way. And we will receive that truth by faith. And that faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ and what He's done. Amen. So we have confidence in what we hope for. Brothers and sisters, what do we hope for? To win the lotto? No. No. We, our hope is in the resurrection of the dead. That's right. That there is something beyond this sin-cursed world. Young ones, listen to me. The world is trying to teach you the lie that everything's great. Everything's just peachy keen and it's going to work out. It's not. The world is hard. The world is ruthless. I'm a 50-year-old man and I have pain every day. No one told me. I hurt. I struggle. If that's what this life is about and that's it, damn be anyone who enters this planet. That's right. Amen. But there is hope. Amen. There is hope in the resurrection of the dead. That the God man, the Lord Jesus Christ, went to the cross for my sin and he went to the cross for yours. Thank you, Lord. And that sin was atoned for. It was paid in full for all who have their faith and trust in him. And He is one that cannot lie because He is our Creator. He is our Maker. He is the one who formed it at His command. God created ex nihilo out of nothing, from nothing. He created it. And we have confidence in this. That's right. oh. So we have a great hope. That hope that we received was through the power, the power of the gospel. Because that power that's in the gospel is the only thing strong enough to change your actions, to change your soul, to change your behavior, to change who you are. Because you see, we were born in sin. We were born with this corrupt nature. And it is only the power of God, by faith received in our soul, to change us from darkness to light. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I now have the light of life. I now know that there is goodness. There is righteousness. There is a way that is right. Amen. And in that righteousness, I now love my neighbor. I'm taught to... Be generous and kind and loving and peaceable and merciful. Yeah. 
And those are the marks for us as Christians. That the world would see the glory of God in His children. That we would reflect His glory to a lost and dying world. That gives us purpose. That gives us meaning. So we have confidence in what we hope for. If we are not trying to straddle the world and the kingdom. It's either one or the other. Now, I got you. Sometimes, and we've all been here, when we meet the Lord, we have little faith. Right? There's little faith. These are, these are elements of um, what Jesus would say is, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds, if you will. I'm not going to get to the bottom of that verse, and so we're not going to go there. But the fact of the matter is that I know that even a little faith will change an addict to a non-addict. Amen. Amen. I know that even a little faith will turn someone who's been victimized emotionally, mentally, or physically and change them so that they don't see themselves as victims anymore. That's right. To give them a release on life. Little faith will take ignorant people and make them wise. It will take the sexually immoral and make them pure. Right. It will take the greedy and the stingy and make them generous. Little faith will take tempers and tame them. It will take the sins of a previous generation and break them. Amen. Faith laughs and conquers all impossibilities. Faith is that place where it happens. When we trust, when we believe, when we turn our hearts to God and receive what He has for us in His Word. Alone, His Word speaks Life, it speaks everything we need. And faith, as it says in 1 John 5, verse 4, will overcome the world. Faith conquers our conscience. Since the fall, since the original sin... Our consciences have been corrupted. We've been busted. But the Lord Jesus Christ, when He came, came to give us this faith in Him and what He did on that tree so that our life has purpose and meaning, so that we're not lost, so we're not wandering and wandering, that we can stand firmly in full assurance about what we have not yet seen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're convinced of a truth that we have not yet seen. Now, we have many things like that. Anyone believe love exists? We do. Yes. You can't measure it. Like, give me a pound of love. <laughs> can't do it. Right? It's, it's, it's in the heart that we understand and receive those elements of truth. And faith is the same way. Now, love is a result of faith. But we receive them in the same way. We, we all have unloving nature about us. It's part of our corrupt sin nature that's still in us. But God, by faith, wants to change that. He wants to help us. He wants to encourage us and strengthen us. But we need to give ourselves over to this faith in a greater way. And as I said, that picture in Romans 10 gives us the key. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word about Christ. If we are not reading our Bibles, there is no way... God comes upon you with greater faith. There's no way. It doesn't happen. 
God doesn't lob faith bombs out of, the, out of heaven. It doesn't work like that. Faith comes from hearing the word. That word is about Jesus Christ. It's not the dictionary. It's not. It is the Bible. It's all scriptures. It's the radical holy truth of God. That God had a plan. That the entire Bible that would be revealed to us is about the redemption of his lost children. To reconcile them back by the power of Jesus Christ. And we receive that truth by faith. So faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. And this is what the ancients were commended for. See, you can, you can trace verse 2 into 50 lines in this chapter. And thousands and thousands of others. I encourage you, and I, I, I hope... That we're all reading about faith over these past couple weeks in some way. But I encourage you to go and when you're reading these Old Testaments, especially Judges and Kings, and sometimes you wonder, what is this about? What is the, old, what is the Word of God about in these old pictures here? Think about faith. We've got these great examples in Noah and, and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. I'll go ahead a little bit. Verse 32. What more shall I say? I don't have time to tell you about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets. Go and look at these pictures of faith. They're amazing. Absolutely incredible. People believe things that they did not see. It's a very powerful picture. It's a great encouragement for all of us to seek the face of God and His Word. And then to reflect upon our own souls. When are we facing trials? When we're facing troubles? Are we believing in things we have not yet seen? Talked about this this morning in Sunday school that God disciplines his children. We need to receive that discipline by faith. If we don't, we're going to try to battle the Lord. Why me? What are you doing this to me for? And I've, I've been guilty of being overcome by that thought. And the Lord met me. Or I met him. In a place where it turned completely. Where I began to understand that I need to be shaped in the image of the Son. I'm being shaped in the image of Jesus Christ in this. Isaiah 45 tells me very carefully that I'm been put in the furnace of affliction that God would purify me. That I'm being refined like silver. And in that refiner's picture, the refiner looks to see his face in that reflection. Jesus wants to see himself in me and in you. In all that we do. Not just Sunday, not just when it's okay, all the time. He wants His image to be revealed in all of us. And when you see it, you love it. When I see some of these brothers and sisters here, and I see them given over in the Spirit, loving in ways, being courteous, encouraging, my soul soars. It's, 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 it's lofted and just exalting God to see the Holy Spirit alive in your lives. It's beautiful. Amen. And our souls love it. We love to see God on display in each other's lives. It's awesome. So faith is giving us great purpose and meaning. Let's get forward to verse 6. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Impossible. That's not a little bit. I mean, they lay down the word impossible. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That is it. It's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. What shall I do, Lord? Read my word. Hear about me. Listen to what I've done for you. 
I'm awesome. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm good. Read about me. Find me. Seek me. I'm not going to hide from you. Never. He wants to be glorified in us. He wants to be known. He wants to be revealed and he wants to be seen. He's waiting for you to climb a hurdle to do something great that you would be not ready. It's not true. He wants your humility. He wants you to be humble before him that you would then be the vessel for his use. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And we remember those days when you didn't believe he existed? Yep. Sad. I remember those days. I, 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 I praise God Almighty. I don't know how I made it. I honestly don't. I, I, it's just very confusing to sit back and think of so many... I said this before. You ever come to the point where you realize that every single thought you ever had was wrong? Mm -hmm. Just every every twist and turn. You, you know, as a, as a man, you're trying to make your way through the world, trying to understand this place, you're trying to understand what's going on around you, and the Lord confronts you, and he confronts you, and you just say to yourself, nothing, nothing, nothing. We praise him that he came by faith and began to build his foundation. He begins to lay that foundation of understanding, of holiness and righteousness, and beckons us and calls us to something that's bigger than us. Giving us meaning. Not just temporal meaning, but eternal meaning for our lives. Something bigger than us. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You'll have to answer that in your own heart. How are you seeking the Lord today? He's given us many means of grace. He gives us his word. He gives us prayer. Okay? Sometimes our prayer lives are wax, they wax and they wane. When he gives us encouragement. I want you to think about your prayer life like this. That God always, always, always wants to hear from you. Doesn't matter when. God is always on. He's 100% every minute, every second, all the time. And he wants to hear from you. So if you would consider that when you go to prayer, that you're entering <laughs> into a room to sit down with the Lord of glory himself. That you would see him face to face in your mind's eye. If you would do that, you wouldn't have trouble praying. You'd have trouble leaving. Mm -hmm. We would see that right. That we are in communion with the <laughs> one who made everything. And the one that we will stand before. He gives us his church as another way of seeking him. He calls people to stand before others and bring his word to bear upon their souls. The responsibility is to receive that message, to receive the spiritual truth that's being brought from a pulpit every week. Sometimes we might say, well, I'm a little distracted. Well, repent, pay attention. It's important. God sent his messengers, he does it once a week so we can gather together to hear what he has for our souls, that we would be encouraged, we would be strengthened in our faith, encouraged to move along this life. Because we don't know when our last day is going to be. No one does. For the life is in the blood. And anyone is one heartbeat away from meeting the Lord Jesus Christ when that blood does not flow. And he re does reward those who earnestly seek him. We have both spiritual and temporal rewards. The peace of God 
that we receive by faith takes all of the noise away of our lives. And anyone who has met the Lord knows exactly what I'm talking about. We all have hardships. We all have problems. We all have troubles. When we cast our souls upon His grace, upon His mercy, by faith, He does not turn His back on us ever. He receives us. He encourages us. He, and he is our help in the time of need. Giving us those temporal helps that we are longing for, we're thirsting for. Sometimes minute by minute, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need you. And he's there and he answers every time. Right. He gives us the eternal peace also. Mm. As I said, we don't talk enough about it, but there is a judgment to come. There is, that, that this world, if it is just but this, is a vile, despicable place. It's nothing but pain, and hardship, and then death. And the ones that were born weaker, there's no justice for them. It can't be so. It can't be so. We have a glorious God who made everything. We have a glorious God who has revealed to us by our sin, by our conscience. We're broken before Him and we receive the truth of what He's done for us by faith. So by faith we lean on Christ. By faith we rest in Christ. By faith we trust in Christ. And this faith begins to encompass all that I am. It, it, it actually does encompass all that you are and all that I am. But we are so prone to our original sin that we reject. We still do. We need to break down that, that dividing wall of hostility between us and God. Our, we are still railing against God in our hearts and in our minds. We need to humble ourselves. All of the scriptures that God opposes our pride, but he shows grace to those who are humble. So faith encompasses all that I am. And we can't believe without faith. We can't understand the gospel without faith. We can't understand all of the biblical truths. <coughs> That we are justified by faith. We use these big words, justified. <coughs> Just as if I hadn't sinned. That's how the Father now sees us because my faith is in Christ. So on that day of judgment, I don't face an angry judge. I come to my Father who loves me. Hallelujah, Lord. So faith ultimately is God's story in every one of our lives. God's story being created. God's story being revealed. God's story as we move from faith to faith. Deeper understanding, deeper truths of who He is and what He's done. And that is a powerful truth. Now, I want to give you a warning about faith also. Just turn with me for a moment to Romans chapter 11. I spend a lot of time in the book of Romans, and it's interesting when you start focusing on particular subjects. Faith in the past couple of weeks. Having read this book many times, uh, man, just these things just jump off the page. Very powerful. We're going to look at three verses, but the first one's going to be in Romans 11 and verse 20. This is talking about Israel's unbelief. And interestingly, if you read this, this is really juxtaposition because. It's against nature. 
And that's part of the argument here, that we, as a wild olive shoot, are being grafted in. That's not how you would do it. <laughs> you would graft a, 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 a fruitful, tamed shoot into the wild tree. You wouldn't do it the other way. But that's what God did. Powerful picture. But, and Paul gives this phenomenal argument. He says, granted, but they were broken off the branches of this <laughs> olive tree of all God's people. Okay, they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand by faith. Don't be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. I think that speaks to this Christendom in which we live in this day where we want one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. You will be broken off. You can't do that. It doesn't work like that. Do not love the world or anything in the world as God's command. And we need to be taught. We need to learn. We need to be shown how to deal with this world so that it isn't our all in all. So we're not shattering the second commandment every day. Yes, God made stuff. He loves stuff because he made it. Okay? But the fact of the matter is that we are getting so... It, 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 squeed, it begins to push out our Bible reading and pushes out our fellowship and pushes out the, 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 the means of grace that God has given us. He won't spare us in that way. We could be broken off in that way because we are in the vine. We're, we're trying to be in the cultivated tree and in the wild tree at the same time, if you will. It doesn't work like that. God's called us to one king, the Lord Jesus Christ, one master. We can't be slaves partially to Jesus and partially to the world. We are slaves to one master. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. And then interestingly, Romans 16, but this is a beautiful picture. This is a really beautiful picture. Verse 5. It's a very peculiar picture what Paul does here. He makes this idea, the bookends of the book of Romans. Because he says the same thing in verse 16 and 26 as the book is closing. Here's the verse. Verse 5. Through him we receive grace and apostleship to call all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. Have you heard of such a thing? Have you heard of the obedience that comes from faith? It's not just flop around and do whatever we want. I used to do that. I, I, I did dopey things like that. I didn't know any better. It breaks my heart. It's not. It's the Lord's way. It's His will. It's His righteousness. It's His righteous way. And he calls us to obedience. Or, as another way of saying, is that, you know, self-control. The thing the Bible's really big on, right? Those elements are to drive us in a direction. That means with your decisions, your efforts, your thoughts, your hands... Your mouth, your feet, all that you are, are called into obedience. This is a funny saying. Um, I said this to the brother. When we baptize people, we've got to baptize them with their wallets, too. That's because true. sometimes when they're baptized, they don't understand the tithing picture of supporting their church. That's an obedience. It is. It hurts, right? Sometimes. I'm sure. Is it? it is. It's real. Yeah. But there's an obedience that God blesses from that. 
that's beyond your understanding, beyond my understanding, how he uses his word in powerful ways because of that obedience. And by the way, it's not an obedience that says, oh, I'm God, I just saw it's hard. It's an obedience that says, Lord, thank you. I have light. Oh, sure, it's just the lamp into my feet. That's all I need because I'm trusting by faith that you will lead my next step and I won't fall. The power of his word unleashed in our lives when we receive it by faith. He will move us through this life for his glory. He is the one that will do the mighty lifting. He will do the mighty work. Like I said, 16 and 26. This is just so mind-boggling. But now made known and revealed through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. We can't escape it. That's a very, very powerful thought. I'm like, I'm not like pointing my finger saying, come on, man, I'm learning too. I need to bring, is, is, uh, I believe the flip is, we've got to bring all, all that we are to the obedience of Christ. And it starts with the mind. It does. You, 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 we think, we, we consider things, we, we, we're, we're trying to understand, we're trying, we're trying to deal with stuff. I said this many times in the past, your heart is never going to exalt what your mind is rejecting. You won't do it. So I say this by way of encouragement, okay? Um, we read that Hebrews 11, 2, that we know that the universe was made at God's command. If there's anybody here that's, that's just wondering about that, I, I have a DVD for you. I'm putting it back if you want one. And even if you haven't seen it, I'm going to ask you, I'm encourage you to watch it anyway. We all watch the nature shows on whatever channel, right? This is one of these like nature shows that will reveal the glory of God in profound ways as he's revealed in nature. Because that is one of the ways that God does reveal himself. He does. Everyone, every person can be condemned by nature alone. You don't need to be, the, you don't need to hear or not hear the gospel be condemned by God. The, the, the heavens declare the glory of God. You can't escape that. But maybe you have people in your family that are doubters or mockers or scoffers. This is a very powerful disc that will you know, look at the concept and the precepts that we just accept from nature all around us. And we're presented in the light of the knowledge and wisdom of God. You can't escape the power of it. Faith is a gift. Ephesians chapter 2. Probably, this, praise the Lord. This church could probably say it off the top of their head. That is a blessing. It's verse 8. It's actually 8 and 9. For it is by grace... You have been saved. How? Through faith. Through faith. And this is not from yourself. This is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's a gift from God. Anyone who understands it, even just a little bit in your soul. Hallelujah. You have been enlightened in the knowledge of God. It is by grace, you, God's unmerited favor. He's chosen you not because of anything you did or God looked through the catalog of life and said, oh, he would respond. Not at all. Not at all. The brother and I had a conversation this morning. When you begin to understand grace, even a little bit, it will swamp you like a tidal wave. It will overwhelm your soul. Grace is amazing. We love that song, right? And that's true. It's powerful. 
Grace is amazing. But it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. You can't receive the grace of God without faith. Amen. Where would we be without faith? And there's the picture. And this is not from yourself. It is the gift of God. God grants it. But he's, like I said, he's not holding it back. Like, okay, you got to do, you got to jump over this room. No, he says, call unto me. Read about me. Understand me. And here's the rub. Here's the rub. Believe every word he said. Every single word is true. Amen. Matter of fact, I'm going to challenge you. If you find anything that's false, I will make the statement that the entire Bible is false. That's a bold claim. That's it, you know? Every single word is pure, pure, pure truth. That is the life-changing picture of what the Bible reveals to us. And it reveals Christ. And it reveals those great and glorious truths about our Savior. And we receive it by faith. I will also say this. When we do stumble, Call out to the brothers and sisters by faith. Call out to God by faith. If you're struggling with why would God do this and what about that, get yourself in a Bible study where the Word of God is open, where you can ask questions, where you can get answers to your questions. That's God's business to bring us together in that way. We all have questions. There's nothing wrong with that. I can make a testimony. I sat at a Bible study. <laughs> I sat at a Bible study two years trying to prove the Bible wrong. How wicked is that? Good luck with that. Amen. <laughs> but you know what? In a very, very wise way, the brother that I sat with, he didn't he didn't swap me with, with you this and you ought to do You know what he said to me? Go ahead. Read this. Oh, uh, I'll read that. And I did. I didn't know I was putting in the slot, okay? That's the, that's the reality of it. And I was beginning to read and read and read and prove it wrong. And I remember one day the Lord spoke to me so, just I had an event in my life, a very, very intense work event. And I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, and I, it was exactly what I went through. And I remember being radically undone because the world had taught me man's improving. Oh, man, it's getting better. He's doing this and he's doing that and he's more... And it was written 3,500 years ago and it freaked me out that this word was so true today as it was then. What improved? It was the same thing. Couldn't be. And I, and I remember that really, really... I wasn't saved yet, but I had... Somehow God had showed me his word was true and it freaked me out. He'll do that. Yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. Speak, Lord, from your word to all of us. Right? right? right. Galatians. Verse 2. I'm sorry, chapter 2, verse 2. <coughs> Oh, Lord God, speak to us from this verse. Lord, may this be a meditation of our souls and understand you rightly. Hmm. Brothers and sisters, this verse is so centered. It is such a power in the gospel. Receive this as radically true in your soul. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. God did not come to fix your life. He came to kill it and to produce the image of His Son in you. I have been crucified with Christ on that cross and I no longer live. I no longer live. The life I now live in this body, I live by 
faith in the Son of God who did what? Who loved me and gave himself for this sinner. That's an overwhelming thought. My life is now hidden in Christ for all eternity. In the life I live, oh, I'm so, such a wreck. I don't I'll follow his will and his way enough. But hallelujah, one day I will. Amen. One day I will stand in his presence in this sin soaked body will be done away with. And I will have a resurrected body where I will love him the way he ought to be loved. And I love each and every one of you the way you ought to be loved. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in this body, I live by faith in the truths of the things I have not yet seen. They are directing what I'm doing. They're directing the direction I'm going. Oh, sometimes imperfectly, but I'm heading toward the light. Right. I live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. So brothers and sisters, this is it. This is, the, this is the great plan for God on our souls. This is the great purpose. That we now, by faith, can steer down cancer. The confidence of the Lord. By faith, we are called from our planned, self-saved, easy life into a life that's a life of ministry and service to others. By faith, we can pull out of grievous sin and call on the one who has the power to pull us out by faith. By faith we pray for our unsaved spouses and our unsaved children. By faith we serve others even when our bodies are trying to stop us. By faith we put our lives in God's hands to direct us and send us on the way we should go. Amen. So Lord God, oh Lord God, we thank you for faith. Lord of heaven and earth, you are so awesome that you have done it this way. Lord, that anyone who hears your truth, Lord, can come to you by faith, can call out to you by faith, Lord, and you turn nobody away. Lord, anybody who hears the truth of the gospel responds in their heart. Lord, you receive them. Lord, and they receive you by faith. So, Lord, thank you for your infinite mercy. Thank you, Lord God, for your faith. We praise you.